we wanted to talk a bit about uh, new regulations coming up. Uh, I think uh, the first one I, I would uh, I like to address is, is one from the US. Um, as I understand, Nevada is, has currently a proposal on the table uh, in order to, in my understanding, bring smart contracts and the concept of smart contracts into the real world, into the real contractual world. Uh, maybe one of you want to say some words on that? Sure. Uh, I'm actually working with a professor of law at uh, Cardozo Law School in New York right now. Uh, our team and his team are working on a, a, an article on the topic of smart contracts and their enforceability under U.S. law. The position that we're taking is that you don't need incrementally new laws to make sure that smart contracts are enforceable. That the existing contract law framework in the United States should be sufficient to make smart contracts enforceable. What Nevada is trying to do is to further codify this concept. And what we hope happens is that they don't mess it up. <laughs> and, and they don't try to change contract law as the result of, uh, in order to try to accommodate smart contracts, which we think fit nicely there. L let me just mention uh, uh, one other area, and, and Neha touched on this briefly is the money transmitter area. So n a number of states in the U.S. have uh, changed or, or clarified their money transmitter laws to say that digital currencies or virtual currencies are not covered by money transmission, which is very good. The, it is important, however, <laughs> to remember that when you go from fiat to digital, or from digital to fiat, that's still going to be money transmission because of the involvement of, of fiat currency. So perhaps when BCP is a reality, we can have digital dollars, digital francs, and we won't have to worry about going from fiat to virtual or virtual to fiat, because it will all be virtual. Okay, thank you. When I read about the, the Nevada project, and I read through just briefly, it's a very short um, regulation, so it's like two, a two page or something. Uh, so it's, you can easily read through it. I thought, well, this is a great idea. Let's, do we need that in Switzerland as well? And uh, in Switzerland, there's currently an initiative going on of the Federal Council to kind of find out what regulatory changes are required to be fit for the digital age. That does not only relate to blockchain technology, it doesn't relate at all to TGEs as such, but uh, to the digital environment in general. And uh, maybe Martin, uh, I think you're also involved in this process. You could tell us a bit more uh, on what, where the focus lies in, in Switzerland when it comes to this question. There are many questions. One is uh, e-identity, then the signature, digital signature is still very clumsy today. Uh, it's about uh, assigning. There you need, you need uh, to do it in writing today. Assigning, for example, shares. If they are not uh, so-called effecten, then you have to, to uh, write it down on a paper. And one open question in the digital world is, what legally is digital data? Can you own digital data? Is there property? This is an open question, and uh, uh, I'm really fighting for opening uh, the, the term of, of a thing, of a sache, property of a, I can own this glass, but can I own data? I think yes. I think we can apply the same rules to, to a, a glass than to digital data. means you can have property and you can have possession. Very old rules, but all the time you need to control it. Only, only data that is controllable can be owned or possessed. And I think there is for me, the, the blockchain is really a tool which opens I think opens economy, but without the basis that we can have property of digital data or that you have the, 
that you can own a Bitcoin, for example. That was a question. Can you own a Bitcoin? Can you have property? That's really important. And one last remark. If a, a provider goes bankrupt, and if you want to get out your data, you need property to get it out. And uh, this is also an, an unsolved issue at the moment. What happens if a provider goes bust? So I think there is a, a lot of initiatives behind the, behind the scene uh, to, to move forward in a really digital law system. And it's not about regulation, it's about enabling what happens today. I think if I ask you, do you own your data? You say, yes, I'm the owner and it's, it's me, it's mine. It's totally normal, but for a lawyer that's not clear and that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.